let's make a beautiful interactive main menu for your game we're going to create this parallax effect and we're going to import custom fonts for our buttons and we're going to add sound effects or when we hover and click and we're going to make a simple options menu when you press play it's going to start the game you can grab all of the assets in the description below so i created a new scene called menu then i started placing the different layers from the sky the mountains the hills and stuff like that all from my free assets Asset pack that you can find in the description below. I also placed my animated player character and I disabled all of the input and interactions. So now he will just stand there idling. Next I added the wind material to all of the different layers. You can check out my other tutorial to learn how to create this material. It's just a simple wind swaying animation. Finally I decided to add leaf particles that I created in my previous tutorial. So the scene is pretty much ready. Now we can add the title, the buttons, and the parallax effect. To achieve the parallax effect we're going to create a new menu parallax script it's going to have four different variables an offset multiplier and the smooth time and two private variables for the start position and the velocity in the start method we're simply going to store the current initial position and then in the update we're going to add this line we're going to grab the mouse position then we're going to convert it to the viewport space and store it in a temporary offset variable finally we're going to smoothly move towards that offset by using the velocity and the smooth time now back in the editor you will notice that I have all my layers organized neatly here and I'm going to attach the menu parallax to each one of these layers and set up the offset multiplier. I want my player layer to be fixed so I disable the menu parallax there and as I go towards the background so towards the mountains I decrease by negative 0.3 and then for the layers that get closer to the camera I increase by positive 0.3. Okay, that's a finished parallax effect. Now we can move on to the buttons. You can find lots of fonts on fonts.google.com. Just find the one that you like and click download family. Or I found my font on dafont.com. So all you have to do is drag the TTF file to your project. Next, go to Window Package Manager, type in Text Mesh Pro, and just make sure you've got it installed. Then we right click on the font, create Text Mesh Pro font asset. Then right click in the scene, UI Canvas. We're going to go to the Canvas Scaler and set it to scale with screen size. And we're just going to create our reference resolution. I'm just going to set it to 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. Next, we want to create an empty game object. I'm going to call it Title, and I'm just going to scale it and position it right here. Inside of there we want to create a UI text mesh pro text this is where you can write the name of your game gonna make it bold and capital letters font size 128 and I'm gonna center the text vertically and horizontally we can replace the font by dragging the new asset we created and I'm just gonna rescale it we can enable the underlay set the offset on the X to 1 on the Y to minus 1 dilate to 0 and softness to 1 if you want the text to have a solid color you can set the color here in my case I'm going to use a color gradient so right click create text mesh pro color gradient Gradient. I'm going to use a vertical gradient and then we just need to assign it to our font and these are the colors that I'm gonna use so I made it lighter on the top and darker on the bottom and the purple helps to contrast the text from the background Next, I'm going to duplicate this title and I'm just gonna write this is a I'm gonna decrease the size and put it above the menu text then I'm going to right click create UI image and I'm going to use this flourish that I created in Photoshop I'm just gonna position it to the left of the title and I'm gonna use the same color and I'm going to add a simple drop shadow. I'm going to duplicate it and add it to the other side and I'm going to flip the scale on the X. Next we're going to create another game object. This time we're going to call it main menu to scale it and position it and then create a text mesh pro button. I'm going to remove the image component and then on the text I'm just going to use the same font. I'm going to set the font size to 64, vertex color to white and I'm going to use the same gradient and then I'm just going to position it. On the button component, we're going to set the target graphic to be the text and we're going to set the normal color to be dark, highlighted color to be super bright, and then the press color to be super dark. I'm going to drag my audio manager into the scene, check out my other tutorials to see how to create this. As you can see, I've got various different sounds in my sound library. On my button, I'm going to add an event trigger and I'm going to add a pointer enter event for the hover. And then I'm simply going to hook up the audio manager, access the sound manager and play a 2d sound which is called hover i'm also going to add a pointer click event and i'm just going to call the click sound effect 
and we should have a working button. Then I'm going to make a prefab out of the button and I'm just going to duplicate it a bunch of times for the options and quit buttons. And I'm just going to reposition everything. Next, to make the buttons actually do something when we press them, we're going to create a simple main menu script. We're going to be using unityengine.scene management. We're going to remove the start and update functions and replace them with a new public void play function and public void quit function. Make sure that they're public so that we can access them from outside. Notice that in the play method, we're loading a scene that's called game. So you obviously have to have a scene that has this name in your project. And not only that, you have to go to file build settings and add all of the scenes that you want your game to have. The first scene on this list will have a build index of zero. That means that when your game starts, this will be the first scene to be loaded. In our case, we want this scene to be the main menu, but you also have to add all of the other scenes that you want to load within this game. Cool. So now all we have to do is attach the main menu script to the canvas and then hook up the buttons so that the play button calls the play method and the quit button calls the quit method. Next, I'm going to duplicate the main menu. I'm going to rename it to the options menu. I'm going to delete the play and options buttons and I'm going to rename the quit button to the back button. On the on click event on the back button, instead of quitting the game, we're going to enable the main menu game object and we're going to disable the options menu game object. And then we're going to do the same on the options button, but in reverse. Finally, I'm going to create a UI slider, scale it up. I'm going to set the background color to a lighter color. Then I'm going to set the fill area to a darker color. I'm going to change the knob sprite to a square. And then I'm just going to duplicate the text. I'm going to write in sound and then I'm I'm just going to scale everything and position everything and I'm going to duplicate it for the music as well. And that's it. You should have a gorgeous looking main menu for your game. If you want to learn how to make the options menu actually work, then check out my next tutorial, which is going to be on audio mixers. If you want to grab this 2D water pack or my asset pack, you can find it in the description below for free.